Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. Uh, welcome, everybody. Appreciate the opportunity to be able to kind of walk through this. And so uh, here with Mike, and uh, we're just going to jump into a demo to be able to show you what um, what these products around Azure Arc uh, are really about and help them kind of come to light. Because like Ryan said, you know, he, he talked about Azure Arc as the mechanism to use Azure as the control plane for resources that live inside and outside of Azure. So we just wanted to show you know, a quick view of what that might look like. And so we're sitting here now in, in the Azure portal. And this is a familiar space for folks. I think it provides that single pane of management ac across all your Azure resources. That's the, that's the standard um, view of Azure portal. Uh, and if I look on here, I, you know, we're sitting right now in a in a in a VM, uh, this hybrid VM one. So this is a this is a standard VM in Azure. Uh, and at the top, you can see there's the controls that you use to manage that VM. You can start and stop it. You can connect to it. Those kind of things. And then on the side, we have all these other extensions and services that are available for that VM, whether it's properties or configurations or monitoring or uh, you know, the, just basic operations. And this is this is standard stuff, right? VM activity. And it, so if we go back to the, the, the regular portal, the main portal, and you know, we'll just jump into a, a resource group here where we've got some other stuff. This, so this is a this is a resource group that's holding a bunch of different Azure resources. Um, and we go into uh, our a resource group that is uh, the, our hybrid VM resource. Um, you'll notice that you know we we'll start to see a few interesting things here. So there, there's these icons. They look a little different from the VMs that we used to see. But you'll see our hybrid VM here in the middle of the screen. Uh, that's the same. That's the same resource that we were just looking at. It's in that resource group. And then a little bit lower, we start to see these other resources. These are machines, right? They're noted as as Azure Arc machines. Um, and uh, these are systems that are running the Azure Arc agent. So if we if we take a look at one of these, we go into them. This is this is a system that's actually running uh, in our in our San Jose data center. And um, if we click into one of these, you can see that it, it it's a little bit different, right? It looks a it looks a little bit different than what we saw with the standard VM that we were looking at previously, but. Remember, this is a server that's not running in Azure. It's a server that's running in our data center in San Jose, but it shows up as an Azure resource, and it's a first-class Azure resource. Um, it looks like an Azure VM, a little bit scaled down in terms of the functionality, but fundamentally, it looks like an Azure VM because it is an Azure VM. It's 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 a different ARM type or, or Azure Resource Manager, the, the fabric that defines resources, resources within Azure. It's, it's a hybrid compute type as opposed to a compute type in Azure, but it is a VM. It's a legitimate Azure resource. So like any other VM in Azure, you can leverage the, the features that are available uh, from Azure. So on the left-hand side, we see things like, you know, the ability to tag. Uh, and and tags, tagging is really interesting because, you know, tagging in Azure and in cloud in general, it, it's, it's a major advantage for overall governance and management and so the ability to extend tags to systems that are running outside of Azure um, really unlocks some powerful management capabilities that um, uh, we'll start to see as as we kind of get through this you know, you'll see we got the ability to do some extensions right VM extensions uh, this is the ability to uh, add components to the VM uh, that that give it different functionality. Uh, we have uh, resource locks. So if I if I want to um, be able to uh, secure resources, resources so they can't be unintentionally removed from the environment or changed without going through the right um, uh, approval processes, that's there. We also have Azure policy you know, that's available to us here. Um, and you'll notice that not all of the services that we saw in a VM previously are listed here, and that's because Arc is still in preview and the list of these connected services is still growing. But as as those features start to get unlocked by the product groups, they're going to light up in here 
and we'll start to see arc systems that look and act even more and more and more just like native Azure VMs. And really that's the intent, right? The intent is to make arc enabled servers or function with the same level of fidelity as the native Azure VMs. And even so far, so far as um, a hypervisor level activity, like we saw on a VM where you can start and stop and connect, those activities are in the works to be able to do that. Um, and, and with that, it means that you'll be able to use Azure as a true single pane of glass and a management platform across across Azure and non-Azure resources. And when I say non-Azure resources, I'm not just talking about servers that are running in the data center. Um, the, these can be systems that are sitting anywhere. Uh, they can be sitting in places like AWS. Um, and so if we, if we go back here, we can find one of these systems that we have in our environment that is sitting in AWS. Um, so if we go, uh, yeah, here we go. We've got one now, right? This this dev system is sitting in AWS. Um, it's it's in our AWS instance. You, you'll see it's, it looks just like the VM we just showed that was running in our San, San Jose data center. And uh, it's running the Arc agent. And this is exciting because, you know, these Arc resources are first class citizens in Azure and they can leverage the power of Azure even if they're running in AWS. And so, uh, you know, we've got all these systems, all these extensions that are available on our, our services that are available on the left hand side, things like update management and uh, log analytics, things like that. And, you know, I, I think a lot of folks are probably familiar with the fact that for a while now, we've been able to wire up systems that are sitting in our data center um, to things like security center or log analytics azure update azure policy azure automation all those types of things those hybrid scenarios but when we did that they were individually connected to each service and so that results in a separate experience for each service so for example if we go into log analytics here with arc um, i have direct access to the logs for this system and 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 with that level of integration is it's the same level of integration that i have for a, for a regular azure vm in in the past the old way to do this for for a system that was sitting in my in my data center i would have to log into that system uh, identify the the workspace id connect to that workspace and log analytics filter on the computer name and then see that there was no integration back to the system in in the portal like this and so you can see the power of how that ARM integration brings the context, brings everything wired in together into the same system. Um, so, uh, policy, we, we look at policy, maybe that's another great example, right? So we go into, into policy. This is, a again, a standard feature that we've kind of grown to love in, 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 in Azure and we're accustomed to it for Azure VMs, but now we can extend that policy to outside systems. And, you know, this is for domain and non-domain join uh, machines, which means it's not just Windows systems, it's also Linux machines. And there's a huge collection of policies that Microsoft curates and defines, plus they have the ability for you to make uh, or define your own policies. And again, it's one place now, the Azure portal, to assign, validate policy configuration for systems that are running across the entire enterprise, whether that's in Azure, it's in my data center, it's in AWS or Google or anywhere. Uh, change tracking, another great example, central place to manage and identify uh, your systems changes, things like uh, you know, your DLLs might have changed on the system or service, Windows services have changed on the system, folders, registry settings, all that kind of stuff single place to be able to manage the change tracking across the entire enterprise. Um, update management, you know, these are a, another great one that is extended by ARC today. Uh, so be able to manage updates across the entire, you know, the patch management and updates across the entire systems. You can see here, I've got an update that's available that came out today um, that I can apply to that system. 
uh, inventory, another good example. So we're, we don't we won't we don't need to exhaust all of this, but you can see just the integration that we have now with Azure Arc to bring all these systems in context uh, in in Azure Resource Resource Manager, and they become first class citizens in Azure. Uh, and because we don't really have time to show everything, we kind of need to start moving into the to the next uh, stage of the demo. But you can see how Arc really allows us to extend the capabilities of Azure beyond, you know, the quote unquote four walls of Azure, uh, and and gets us to be able to leverage Azure as a management plane for systems, regardless of where they might live. So that's that's Azure for our Azure Arc for servers single pane of glass for server management. Um, and if we if we jump over now to the, the Kubernetes side of, of Azure Arc, um, so here we're looking at this is a this is an AKS instance on on Azure. So our um, you know standard uh, AKS cluster. And you can see again there's there's a selection of services that are available for us to manage and config uh, the, to manage the the systems and the configuration of the of this cluster and to do deployments and all that kind of stuff within within our AKS environment. Um, and if we jump over uh, to an on uh, another cluster that's sitting in our in our data center in San Jose, you'll see again looks just the same subset of services that are available for AKS, but again, that's going to continue to grow out as 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 this um, as Arc moves from uh, uh, from preview into into GA. Um, so but they are consistent capabilities. So if, if we if we um, we look at you know the overview, we can see that we've got our um, uh, um, Node counts. So, sorry, if we go into um, the uh, yeah insights here. Sorry, we can see we've got you know our, our uh, insight into the into the uh, Kubernetes cluster itself. We can see you know some health of that. We, we look in um, performance metrics. We look at the the nodes themselves. So I can I can drill into the nodes and see what's running. What if there's alerts on those nodes? Um, I can also look at you know the the nodes themselves and the containers that run on those nodes. So there's just there there's all kinds of capability. Again, the same capability that is available to me uh, for managing a Kubernetes cluster in Azure, right? An AKS instance in Azure. I'm now extending that same capability to a Kubernetes cluster that is running in my data center. Uh, and as Ryan mentioned, this doesn't have to be running in my data center. It can be any Kubernetes cluster that is available to me. Uh, and I can bring it in under the Arc umbrella and be able to provide that same management and control of uh, the Kubernetes environment. So uh, there, again, there's not, an, there, there's not a whole, whole lot of time for us to be able to kind of dig into each one of these uh, areas. Um, but the ability for us to integrate these Kubernetes clusters into GitOps so that we have seamless deployment of services, um, the ability to onboard new Kubernetes clusters, uh, our, our ability to uh, apply policy and configuration management across those across those Kubernetes clusters, regardless of where they live, uh, is a huge benefit because if you've got um, a, a single way to define and manage how each of your Kubernetes environments is configured and is immutable within the environment, then th that that idea of fleet management of uh, of systems of Kubernetes systems that are deployed in the environment to multiple locations becomes so much easier. Uh, it's one of the the main challenges of a distributed Kubernetes environment today. And so this Azure R gives us the ability to bring all that under uh, under management using Azure as the management platform to be able to um, uh, sustain the Kubernetes environments regardless of where they're at. And you, so you can see how the vision of Arc is enabling really the capabilities of and, and tools that are developed for Azure 
And so they can be used regardless of where those resources live. And, and in addition to that, bring some of this services like, like Ryan touched on, uh, the uh, data services for, for Kubernetes is a great example. These are bringing PaaS services of Azure so that you can run them in your environment on Kubernetes clusters. So uh, manage Postgres, manage uh, SQL. These are PaaS services that are coming out of Azure and I'm running them in the environment um, outside of the four walls of Azure. And it provides me that unified management platform that allows me to have a single pane of glass across all of my environments uh, and all of the services leveraging the power of the Azure platform. So I'll leave it at that. And um, uh, Michelle, do I, do I, uh, or Karina, do I put it back to you? Great. Um, no, that's that's perfect. Um, I don't know if uh, we want to run through any of the questions. Yeah, for sure. Um, is there a way to collect AKS logs and find deployment or pod errors? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's native functionality in um, in the cap in in the capability. Um, are you able to support operational technology like computer enabled industrial CNF, uh, CNC milling machines? Uh, Ryan, you may have a perspective here. I mean, essentially, uh, you know, this is ARC is available for uh, Windows and Linux systems today. Um, and so if it's a uh, fit for purpose, you know, manufacturing machine that is not Windows based or or Linux based, then it would not fall under the um, umbrella of Azure Arc. Hey Steve, yeah. there, there may be, go ahead Ryan. Oh, I, I was just going to mention that would probably fall within our Azure sphere. I, I think that's probably the question around the CNC. And yeah. th there's yeah. there's certainly some ways that we've seen that done in manufacturing and and that's a different team specifically, but, but what I can share of what I'm familiar is a lot of those devices are not intelligent so we kind of confer refer to those as brownfield devices and so you can take an azure sphere chip um, and you can then integrate that with what we call these guardian modules and so that's just a way that you can interface based off of the um you know however you would interface with that device that cnc machine and then you can start to get telemetry all of those devices have some sort of way to interface and pull that data off and then once that data is off you're writing a guardian module on the sphere that collects that data um, and that way that that cnc machine is not internet connected but the sphere device itself is from a security perspective and we've got walt i think you you found an article that kind of talks about that pattern and architecture um but yeah absolutely that's something that you that you can do Ahead, well, making an assumption that if if the device is a brownfield device and it cannot communicate, then that is an option with Sphere or enablement with another device that would take the information and set it. But I think you're looking at this from an IoT perspective. If the device does have some capability to communicate with a protocol like SMB, MQ, SMB, NFS, uh, MQTT, MQP, these are technical terms relative to how these devices communicate, it could work uh, with an IoT uh, solution set and then we could derive I'm not sure if it's command and control, awareness of relative to like mean time before failure, but we'd have to dive into that conversation a bit more. But I think it's possible relative to if the device communicates or we can kind of staple on a device like a guardian module sphere to, to yield the information that you're looking to get. Great. I think that's uh, all the other, uh, all the remaining questions. But then again, um, you know, if there are other questions, please uh, post them and we'll try to answer uh, all the questions of, from the demos that we have today. Uh, thank you, everybody. That's, that, those are great. Um, moving along in our uh, presentation today, I'm excited to talk about the future of IoT and edge computing uh, with Vishwas and Jim. Um, you know, what I usually like to do when we do a panel discussion is, is uh, who's best to present themselves and themselves. So, um, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing in IoT and edge computing today? 